Welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to start looking at vectors. Uh, specifically for this course we look at vectors in two dimensions. Now when you get to some higher courses like Calculus 3 uh, you'll start looking at vectors in three dimensions but we're going to limit our discussion here to these two-dimensional vectors. Now we define a vector in the plane to be a, a line segment with an assigned direction. So for example let's say I have this point A and this point B, I draw the vector AB as this line segment going from A to B and we put this little arrow at the end. Now in our experience so far drawing lines, if you had a line segment that started at a point A and went off into the distance and then had an arrow, we would normally call that a ray. Now there's a difference between a ray and a vector. A ray is just the half of a line, so a ray goes on forever and ever and ever in a specific direction starting from some point A. Now that differs from a vector here because the vector actually terminates as soon as it reaches the point B. This vector is not still going after it hits point B. The reason that we draw the arrow on the vector, it doesn't mean that it keeps going in this direction. The arrow just denotes which direction the vector is moving. So if I drew the arrow down here at point A instead of at B, that would mean that the vector here is going down to the left instead of up to the right. Now the way that we write this is we, we would say this is a vector AB and so if it's printed we'll usually put it in bold but when you're writing it a way you can denote it to be a vector is you put this little arrow on top now I do this little kind of half arrow and that's fine a lot of times you'll also see a full arrow and that means the same thing it means this is a vector AB we call A here the initial point of the vector so this is my initial point and we've used this term initial a lot in this class so you, I bet you can guess what's coming up next we call B the terminal point of the vector. And so vector AB, we have an initial point and a terminal point. And usually for vectors we'll use uh, U's and V's and W's. So I could say something like U equals the vector starting at point A and terminating at point B. And then U here would be the variable that I use then to talk about that vector in the future. Uh, but for now we'll just keep calling it AB. Now the length of this line segment AB is called the magnitude of the vector. So we've had a couple different versions of this. For real numbers we have an absolute value for a real number. Remember for complex numbers we had what we called the modulus to denote the length from the origin to the point and for vectors we have a magnitude. Now the magnitude just means the total distance from the initial point of the vector to the terminal point of the vector, but we denote this the same way that we would absolute value or modulus by these bars on either side. So what this means here at the end is this is the total length of the vector from point A to point B. Now we have a couple other properties of vectors that we're going to talk about here. We say that two vectors are equal if they have the same magnitude and direction. So if I have a vector here, let's say I have another vector over here that's going in the same direction and has the same magnitude, we would say that these vectors are equal. And they're not uniquely equal. I could draw infinitely many vectors and I uh, just have to bear with me and pretend that these are all in the same direction with the same magnitude. I'll try to draw them as close to that as I can. Oh, see that one's the direction's a little off, but uh, we could draw this whole field of vectors, and fields of vectors is a study on its own. But really, the way that we write a vector, we're going to see is going to be representative of some vector with that same magnitude and direction. So all of these are equal vectors. We could say that all of these were, say, the vector v, just because the only thing that we are concerned with with a vector is what direction it's moving in and what the magnitude of that vector is. Where it actually lies in space isn't very important to us. We can draw an equivalent ve vector anywhere that we want to. Now because of that we'll oftentimes draw a vector coming from uh, the origin because it's easier to do calculations but we have that liberty because the vector coming from the origin is the same as the vector anywhere else in space. 
Now if we have two vectors, let's say I have this displacement AB, so let's say I have this displacement AB, and I follow that with the displacement AC, or sorry, BC, so let's say this is my A, I have this vector AB that takes me over here, I have another vector BC that takes my total displacement to C, then the resulting total displacement is the vector AC. Okay, so AB followed by BC is actually one vector and we see here drawing it this way that total resultant displacement can be represented by a single vector AC and we're actually going to use this in the next video where we start talking about vector operations. We'll see you there.